Hey, my name is Mariana Elgao, and this video was brought to you by Mr. Q. Today, I wanted to talk to you specifically about coordinated movements using the cerebellum. Don't freak out yet. Let me give you a bit of context. So part one is, what is the cerebellum and what does it do? So let's locate it to start off. Touch the right part behind your ear that's displayed on the screen. Right behind all the skin and bone is your cerebellum. To give you more of an idea, here's another diagram. That red oval-shaped organ is the cerebellum. According to Healthline, the cerebellum is a relatively small portion of the brain, being about 10% of a total brain's weight. However, it contains roughly half of the brain's neurons. You heard me. Humans have 86 million neurons, and yes, the cerebellum holds around 43 million of them. It is also the home of specialized cells that transmit information via electrical signals. On the other hand, according to that same website, be advised that any damage to the cerebellum while not causing paralysis or intellectual impairment might lead to a lack of balance, slower movements, and shaking. Additionally, complex physical attacks would become unsteady and halting. In other words, if you were to damage your cerebellum, you would not function at the same speed you do at this moment as you're damaging neurons that tell your body what to do. Okay, so part two consists of the researchers. One historical researcher that collaborated in the studying of the cerebellum was Hermann von Helmholtz. He contributed to the studies of mental chronometry by calculating the speed of neural impulses. The reason why is because, as I mentioned previously, the cerebellum structure consists of neurons that transmit chemical signals that allow your body to do its own thing. Moreover, two modern scientists that have collaborated with the studies of the cerebellum are Dr. Jeremy Schmachmann and Dr. Nico Dosenbach. As said by his biography development by his workplace, Dr. Smachman works with the Massachusetts General Hospital and does generalized research on the cerebellum. Because of his prestige and knowledge, his researches regarding the cerebellum have been funded by the National Institute of Health, also known as the NIH, and by private companies. It is also worth noting that he has been awarded with several recognitions. These include the Norman Jeshwin Prize by the American Academy of Neurology in the year 2000, and this was awarded by being the pioneer of modern cerebellum research. On the other hand, as stated in his biography in the Hope Center, Dr. Dosenbach works as an assistant professor for the Department of Neurology, also known as the Hope Center, at the University of Washington in St. Louis, Missouri. His research consists of assessing children with brain injury in order to develop neurorehabilitative treatments to improve their body movement. Once again, this is due to the fact that when the cerebellum is hurt or damaged, it reduces the efficiency of the neurons that indicate the body what it should do. So part three would be answering the question, what does the cerebellum do in terms of coordinated movements? According to the US National Library of Medicine, the main function of the cerebellum is to indicate your body what to do. Its main enemy is ataxia. According to the National Ataxia Foundation, before you say anything, yes, this is an actual foundation in which Dr. Smahman is, in fact, a director in. However, according to the National Ataxia Foundation, ataxia is a progressive disease of the ner nervous system caused by cerebellum damage and can affect people of all ages. As funny as it sounds, its symptoms mimic those of being drunk, as the problems people face that come along with it would be complications using their fingers, hands, arms, legs, walking, speaking, or moving their eyes. Additionally, common symptoms of ataxia include lack of coordination, slurred speech, trouble eating and swallowing, deterioration of movement skills, difficulty walking, gait abnormalities, eye movement abnormalities, tremors, and heart problems. So part four, how do we use exactly the cerebellum in our daily coordinated movements? We use our cerebellum every single second of our lives. Why? Oh God, here comes the explanation again. Because our cerebellum neurons tell our body what to do. I am so done with explaining this over and over again. When we walk from class to class, when we think while doing our homework, kicking or hitting the ball while we're playing our sports, while swimming, while walking on a one inch cable over an active volcano. In other words, everything that we do is because of the cerebellum. And last but not least, how do we improve movement using neuroscience and avoid damaging it? Well, this is a very common question, but the only smart answer that can really go with it would be by doing brain exercises or by taking medication, 
Once again, according to the National Ataxia Foundation, taking medication would only be necessary if you present ataxia symptoms that go along with certain types of medication. How do you avoid damaging it? Don't you involve yourself in activities that can possibly cause you to hit your head, such as playing American football. Here at the bottom of your screen. Former Cowboy tight end just signed a couple of days ago. Flacco rolling, rolling, and running, and he's going to have to, oh, not the ball comes out, helmet's off, flags are down. Boxing or MMA? Jorge Linares celebrates with his team. Kevin Mitchell could not have put any more into that. Doing TikToks. or swinging at your siblings. Whoever gets correct, the amount of times I said Sarah Bomb in this video gets a cookie. Plus, these are my sources, Mr. Q. However, thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you enjoyed it and have a great day.